patients with APL usually present with uh, bleeding, or sometimes they present with feeling tired, bone pain, and sometimes if they've had a uh, major uh, CNS bleed, they present with change in mental status. APL is a rare disease. It constitutes about 3% of all people with AML. There are about 30,000 people with AP, AML in the United States uh, a year. So therefore, there are probably about only a few hundred with APL in the United States each year. But it's known that certain people are at particular risk of developing APL among those who develop AML. And the risk factors, each of which is independent of the other, is uh, younger age, generally in the 40s, as opposed to AML, which generally is in the 60s or 70s, uh, Hispanic ethnic origin, and obesity. So each of those independently predict that someone with AML will have a APL. The differential diagnosis of APL includes uh, many things that can cause low blood counts and many different types of leukemia. The main differential diagnosis is the other types of acute leukemia, which is essentially AML or ALL. When a diagnosis of APL is suspected, the first thing that happens is the pathologist would review the peripheral blood smear, and just on the peripheral blood smear, sometimes they see certain markers or certain features of the leukemia which would be suggestive of APL. Immediately, we should order a FISH test for the translocation 1517 to confirm the diagnosis of APL. The major thing in making sure that APL is correctly diagnosed is you have to have you have to be aware of the diagnosis. Uh, that's certainly the most important thing. Uh, and the people where you should be aware of it is where the patient presents with weakness and bleeding, uh, and the bruises and things like that. And then the first thing to do is you see their blood count, and it's generally abnormal. And in particular, they are often have coagulation abnormalities. And once you see someone with this history, in particular with coagulation abnormalities and a very abnormal blood count, then probably the first thing you should do is, even before you actually make the diagnosis, is obviously you get a bone marrow to make the diagnosis. But these days, people should probably be started on some kind of therapy even before the diagnosis is firmly established. And the reason for that is that the side effects of the therapy are manageable. So if you make the wrong diagnosis, worse things have happened than if you give the patient the treatment. But if you miss, but if you don't give the patient the treatment fairly promptly, then they generally die. And they most often die of bleeding, either in their brain or their lung. The diagnosis is almost always made by oncologists, hematologists, oncologists. The main thing, though, that people um, in the ER or in general practice should be aware of is the existence of a disease and the symptoms, particularly the bleeding that goes, that's part of the diagnosis. Given that APL has such an excellent prognosis with more than 80% of patients cured and even patients with low-risk disease, a higher percentage of them are cured, once a diagnosis of APL is suspected, ATRA should be started as soon as possible.